no, 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 no. There's a difference between hearing and listening. So Bob Marley said, one good thing about music is when it hits, you feel no pain. And that is true unless you just dropped a bag of sand on a soundbar. In which case, that can be pretty painful for your wallet. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying a thousand pound soundbars aren't good. I'm just saying, if you wanna upgrade and massively improve your TV sound, you can do it for as little as a hundred pound with this, the Creative Labs Stage V2. So here's a little background on Creative Labs if you're not familiar with the brand. So they started in business in 1981. And back then they were kind of just doing PC hardware stuff. And they're actually the company responsible for Sound Blaster, the audio PC card back in the day. Some of you original gangsters will remember that. Let me know if you do. So back then they were mainly into the PC and PC gaming audio stuff. And let's be honest, nowadays games have become like interactive movies. So the transition for a company like Creative from that sound market into the TV sound market has been pretty seamless. So what I'm gonna do in this video is give you guys a little bit of a tour of the design here. And also I'm gonna talk about the sound quality of this sound bar. But before we do that, if you're not subscribed, do it! And if you just did, then you are now one of the finest subscribers known to man. Anyway, you ready? Let's go. So straight away, we've got a bit of bling on the front in the way of the Creative logo. It has a solid metal mesh protecting its two drivers, which have a nice separation between them. So that's gonna help that stereo sound. At the center, we have an LED heads up display, which will let you know what's happening, what mode you're in, what volume you're at, and all this kind of stuff. And of course, inside you've got all your usual audio components, including a Bluetooth 5.0 receiver. And I'm not gonna bore you to death with all the specs, they're on screen right now if you wanna pause. On the back of the soundbar, we have a USB-C input, which is awesome, which means you can use devices like the Nintendo Switch or more modern smartphones directly with the soundbar. You've also got a HDMI audio return channel port. So this is audio in, from your TV's ARC port straight to the soundbar. And you've also got an optical in as well and an original gangster auxiliary, otherwise known as a 3.5 millimeter audio input. And then we have a line in for the subwoofer and the stage V2 weighs in at just two kilograms and it's already got the fixings to put it on a wall if you want to wall mount it. At the base as well, you've got rubber feet. So if you're gonna have it on a tabletop or on a TV stand, that's gonna absorb the vibrations and it's also gonna stop it from sliding around on the surfaces. And on the right side of the sound bar, you can see we have physical controls behind this rubber layer here. These are super necessary because there are no batteries in the box for the remote control. So you will need to use this probably straight away, but it's also very handy if you lose the remote, you've got your power on, you've got your volume controls and you can activate the Bluetooth right here. And the remote is actually really nicely designed as well. It's a very simple and concise design. You've got this nice brushed metal effect finish here, and there are no unnecessary buttons on board at all, which is good because it avoids confusion. And I'll be honest with you, I'm still trying to figure out what some of my TV remote buttons do. And let's take a quick look at the subwoofer. It is a wired subwoofer and the cable's around about two and a half meters long. So we'll need to sit quite close to the soundbar wherever you have it. It's a tall and narrow design, perfect for sitting at the side of your table or desk. It's front ported and the driver is at its side. From my testing of this soundbar, one bit of advice I can give you guys is make sure that driver at the side has some clearance because if it doesn't, the base will be significantly impacted. But overall, it's quite a simple and subtle looking sub and you kind of want it to be discreet. So that's a good thing in my opinion. And again, we've got a little bit of creative bling here on the front. Now let's talk about sound because I think a lot of people listen, but they're not really hearing. Know what I mean? And listen here real quick. I spent four years of my life working in technology showrooms around really high end audio equipment. 
And I've also been reviewing speakers and headphones and all this kind of stuff on this channel for around about six years. So I like to think that I've got quite a good idea of what sounds good. But always remember, sound is very subjective. Everybody kind of hears it slightly differently. So all I can really do in this video is offer my personal opinion. So if you're planning to upgrade your TV sound, if you've only been using TV sound and never had any other audio equipment, the first thing you're gonna notice if you upgrade to one of these is the difference in bass. Because you've got this 2.1 setup, the 0.1 is the subwoofer and that delivers a massive amount of bass compared to any TV out there right now, pretty much. So when it comes to sound, that's the first big difference. And there is an option on here to tweak the bass and the treble as well, so you can customize the sound. But check this out, the standard sound signature before using any of the pre-built EQs is actually really nice. I'm really impressed with this. For the price that it comes in at, I didn't expect it to be as nice as it is. The two drivers are far enough apart to hear the separation of the left and right channels. The bass is deep enough to annoy your neighbors, but it's not gonna rattle the paintings on their wall, hopefully. It's definitely what I would consider to be a room filling sound. Now, here's one of the problems that some sound bars suffer. When they have too much bass, Sometimes if you have your bass too high or sometimes even tuned this way, what happens is the sound gets very muddy and then the vocal range gets very washed out within that sound. So you can't really hear what people are saying or you can hear what they're saying and then suddenly something blows up and your speaker's way too loud. One good thing about this speaker is it's really nicely balanced, but there's also a dialogue mode. So if you're buying this sound bar to mainly watch TV and sports and stuff like this, where there's lots of talking, you can use this dialogue mode. And what that will do is ramp up the higher frequencies, which are in the vocal range, so you can hear voices more clearly. So that's gonna be good for people who are hard of hearing, or like I said before, if you like watching the news, TV in general, or sports, that is gonna be a fantastic mode to use. It brings down the bass a little bit. You can ramp the volume up without making too much of a racket. And Creative have also put another EQ in there specifically for movies and games, and that's the surround EQ. So what this one seems to do when you switch it on is it kind of opens up the sound stage a bit. I think it does that by adding a bit of reverb there in the sort of higher end tone. So it feels like the room is bigger than it is. And I'm actually very impressed with it. Again, for that hundred pounds, you don't expect it to be as good as it is. And thanks to the Bluetooth 5.0, you can pretty much stream audio to it from any device, which is pretty cool. The quality there is also very nice. It's not the highest fidelity sound you can ever get on a sound bar. Creative do do higher end sound bars, but for the price, it's really quite awesome. And in terms of volume, you get 160 watts of peak power. So that's pretty good for this price range. And this isn't a smart speaker, but what I've done with it is I've plugged an Alexa directly into it. So whenever I call up Alexa, it comes through the soundbar. So that's pretty cool. But also Creative have an add-on for this, which is a Bluetooth dongle with a headphone jack, which is also a Bluetooth dongle, which means you could plug in a 3.5 millimeter jack into anything in your house and have the receiver here on the soundbar and pretty much play from any audio device. So that's a nice little attachment there. So just to summarize, in terms of sound, the standard sound signature is very good. I like to turn the bass up and the treble up a little bit. The dialogue mode is fantastic for anybody who just wants this to enhance their TV sound. You've got the flexibility to listen to music over Bluetooth, which is nice. And for watching movies, that surround mode really does add and gives you a sort of emulated theater sound, which I really appreciate. Of course, this soundbar could be improved with some additional tweeters and a bigger subwoofer. That would allow for a bit more separation between the audio ranges, and that would definitely cost more money. For the 100 pound that this comes in at, this, I can tell you, is a fantastic sound investment. Thanks for watching this review. Thanks for listening, but what are you hearing? Well, I just said I like to listen to it. No, 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 there's a difference between hearing and listening. Y'all can't hear, Jimmy. You, 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 you listen.